Thanks for being here. Subscribe to Cheating Stories Best, so you don't miss new stories. The wife secretly brought her boss into the house to cheat on you. Today we have a story with that kind of plot. Enjoy watching it. I was jogging along the path between my small office and my house, about two miles away. It was an impromptu run. I was disappointed with some of the work-related materials that were sent to me in a very incomplete state. After about an hour of fiddling with it, I slipped out of my jeans and work shirt and into shorts, a t-shirt and sneakers, along with a pair of sunglasses and a headband, and I was off. I was going to run to my house to get some paperwork I needed, maybe 20 pages. When I was about half a mile from my house, I noticed a guy about 200 yards ahead. This was a little unusual since this path really only led to my house, and hardly anyone used it. There was a cliff that led to the back of the house. The guy in front of me cut this piece off, it led nowhere but to a dead end and to my back door. I quickened my pace. I turned a small corner and looked at the guy. He was at the back door to the patio of my house. I watched him open the door, it wasn't locked. I stopped to think about what I had seen. I knew that my wife, Alice, was working from home that day. I ran to the door. It was locked, of course. I had the key and I used it. I quietly pulled back the patio door and looked inside. There was no one in the kitchen where Alice usually works. Some of her work documents and her laptop were lying on the table. I heard a noise upstairs muted at the entrance from the dining room to the kitchen. I kept a baton, like the ones the police used, for protection. It belonged to my grandfather when he was actually a patrol cop. It was protective, but it also reminded me of him, the man I adored as a child. I took the baton and crept upstairs. The floors were carpeted, so this was not a problem. The door to the master bedroom was closed, and sounds were coming from there. The sounds were muffled, but I assumed they were intimate sounds. I grabbed the door handle, and when it turned, I carefully opened it. Imagine my surprise, the runner's clothes were lying on the floor, and he was just about to climb on top of my wife, my completely without clothes wife. I walked up to the bed and hit the guy on the fifth place with a baton. Loud slap, he screamed and grabbed his fifth place. Alice looked with wide eyes, wide arms, wide legs, wide eyes. She shouted something. I recognized this guy as her boss, Simon Green. He rolled off Alice and stood up from the bed, holding his fifth place. Stop! I was invited, he said. I looked at Alice. She said absolutely nothing. Simon said, you better put it back, or I'll take it from you and kick your fifth place. He was bigger than me, older, about forty or so. I was in my thirties. I heard that he was into martial arts. He seemed so confident as he threatened me, standing there without clothes with pale skin in my bedroom. I didn't know him very well, and he hardly knew me at all. One thing he didn't know was that I spent a lot of time playing tennis. I had a great backhand. I smiled at him, this seemed to drive him crazy. He roared, I mean, it was a roar like a wild animal. He lunged at me from about six feet away. I hit him in the face with a backhand. He didn't have time to duck. The baton hit him on the right side of his forehead. I was aiming for the cheek, but he must have tried to duck as he walked towards me, and his head tilted down slightly. That's why the baton hit him on the forehead. He fell like a bag of cement. He didn't even move when I looked down at him. I looked at Alice. She was in some kind of trance. Her eyes were glassy, and drool was running down her chin. I looked around the room and saw a cell phone on the dresser. It was in an upright position with the screen facing the bed. This son of a filmed everything. I picked up the phone, switched it so I could look at the telephone panel, and dialed 911. What happened to you? The operator asked. My name is Tim Jenkins. I'm at my house at 12, Arbor Circle. A man was in my house, in my bedroom, when he attacked me. I hit him. I believe he is seriously injured and needs immediate medical attention. Besides, my wife is here, and I think she's, I don't know, on pills or something. She is conscious but unresponsive. We have people on the way, sir. If you are armed, please put your weapon down. They will approach your home with caution. Please understand. I understand. 
I'll meet them in the front yard. I heard the sirens and went downstairs. I kept the phone with me, the line was open. I put the baton on the sofa. I walked out the front door. I was standing in the middle of the front yard with my arms at my sides when a police car pulled up, an ambulance followed it. There were two officers, a man and a woman. They got out of the car but did not take out their pistols. The woman, who seemed to be of higher rank, asked, Are you Mr. Jenkins? Yes, they are up there. See us off. I turned and walked back inside, and the officers followed me. I led them to the bedroom door and stepped aside. The door was open, Alice was lying on the bed. She looked into space. Green didn't move at all, from what I could tell. A female officer knelt next to Green and checked his pulse. She told another officer to call paramedics. Then she looked at Alice. She asked, Ma'am, are you okay? Ma'am, no answer. The doctors arrived, and I moved away. They worked feverishly on Green. The second group of doctors arrived. The police officer, Sergeant Leslie Hayden, removed the robe from the closet door, lifted Alice from the bed, and put on the robe. She led Alice into the guest bedroom. She looked at me and pointed down. Go there. Don't leave, but stay out of the way. I went into the kitchen and looked around. I downloaded the video from Green's cell phone onto a small computer I kept in my desk drawer. Then I downloaded the entire contents of the phone into another file. I emailed the video to my office. Then I turned the thing off and left the phone on Alice's desk. I watched from the kitchen doorway as the ambulance guys carried Green out the front door, loaded him up, and sped off. A policewoman I had never seen before ushered Alice into the living room, away from me. Alice walked but didn't even look up from her feet. She was wearing a robe and some sneakers. Sergeant Hayden entered the kitchen with the plainclothes detective, a thin, older man, John Dempster. She introduced him to me. He and I already knew each other. My legal practice was now primarily civil, but I had been doing criminal defense for some time, and Detective Dempster and I had a few cases together. I liked him and thought we got along well. Hello, Tim. I'm sorry this all happened. Do you know the person you hit, my wife's boss, Simon Green? Do you have information about his place of residence? We have his clothes, sports equipment, and credit card, but no ID. I don't really know him at all, John. Last I heard, he was married and had kids in school. This was maybe a year ago. Did you have any reason to believe that he and your wife had intimate relations? No one up to this day told me how it happened. Please, I went through everything from my decision to go for a run to relieve stress and pick up some paperwork to calling 911. I didn't really miss anything. I had no reason to do this. So, did you recognize Green when you were outside? No, when he rolled out of bed, that's when I realized who he was. You hit him on the fifth place? Yeah, I didn't mean to cause any real harm, but I wanted this guy to get away from my wife, no matter what she wanted. But then you hit him again. Why? Like I said, he told me to drop the club, or he would take it and beat me with it. Then he roared and rushed at me. Roared? Yes, now I guess he was trying to scare me. He succeeded. I didn't aim at his forehead, I aimed lower. He must have ducked down, or his head dropped lower. Fine. Well, your wife isn't involved in this. We are testing her for the presence of any active substances. I believe that when she comes to her senses, she will confirm what you said. You know, John, this cell phone belonged to Green. I believe he videotaped the intim, all the struggle may be there. Why is he down here? I used it to call 911 and then left it open when I went outside to wait. Dempster asked the crime scene technician to answer the phone. I asked him what would happen to Alice. I'm not sure. Let's go have a look. He and the sergeant and I entered the living room where Alice was sitting with a uniformed officer and a medic. Dempster asked the doctor, what's wrong with Mrs. Jenkins? We're going to take her to the county hospital as a precaution because she seems to be in shock. Her vital signs are fine. I looked at Alice, and at that moment, she looked at me. A tear rolled down from her right eye. I'm so sorry, Timmy, then she seemed to fall into a trance again. 
Alice? Alice? I was a little pissed when she disconnected again, but she didn't answer. A few minutes later, she was taken away in an ambulance. I changed into the clothes I had in the basement and followed us in our car. The police were in the house, but I was assured that they would lock the house or at least leave someone there. I called Alice's parents who lived one state away, about two hours away. I gave them the short version and told them I would call from the hospital. Alice and I got married when she was 21, fresh out of college, where we met. I was one year away from graduating from law school. Alice immediately got a job at Simon Green Insurance Company. It was a large company, and he was one of the three owners. She worked her way up steadily from clerk to administrative assistant. She was assigned to Green's department, housing, and automobiles. I attended company events with her and never noticed anything between the two. That was the first time I met the Green family. She has now worked for the firm for more than six years. I thought her marriage was strong. That is until today I have little doubt that the relationship I saw was consensual. So unless he somehow managed to pill her, this would most likely end our marriage. Given the circumstances, I didn't understand how he could pill her. There was no time. I thought she was waiting for him, probably without clothes, and she left the back door open. I wondered how many times this happened. I loved Alice. She was pretty, cheerful, and kind. Our intimate life was very good, even when I was busy. We still found time, at least on weekends. And now that I've largely given up criminal trials, my work has become much more predictable. I didn't understand what I was seeing. Green was a bigger man, but from what I saw today, not bigger where it would make a big difference. But I only took a glance. Who knows? At the hospital, Simon Green's wife was in the emergency room. I recognized her, but she didn't seem to notice me. I left everything as it was and asked about Alice. They allowed me to return to the compartment where she was. She slept. I looked at her a little. I was lost. I couldn't believe she did this to me, to us. I had a deep need to understand what happened before I made difficult choices. A pretty woman dressed in a white robe entered the small room. I'm Dr. Moore. Are you her husband? I nodded. What's wrong with her? She had some kind of mental trauma. She had a shock reaction that made her pass out. She didn't fall into a stupor. When she wakes up, it is very likely that she will come to her senses and become normal. When will she wake up? Maybe three to four hours, depending on the dose we gave her. Thank you. I'll be there. I believe fine. She was about to leave, but I stopped her. What about Simon Green? How is he? Are you related? No, just an acquaintance. Well, I shouldn't, but he's in a coma, medication induced. He has a very serious head injury. She left. I thought about Green. I believed I killed him, and now maybe not. I called Alice's parents and reported what I had been told. They decided to come to us, but I talked them out of it. I told them that Alice most likely had intimate with her boss and that she and I needed to discuss it. Her mother, Joni Carson, said, I've been thinking about her for the last few months. She seemed different, worried. Please give her a chance to explain everything, Tim. Oh, I'll do that, I promise. It doesn't seem to do any good, though. We'll just see. I went looking for Mrs. Green and found her in the ICU waiting room. I approached her. Hello, Mrs. Green. Yes, do you want to say something? Something, no ma'am. I'm Tim Jenkins. My wife Alice works at your husband's company. It seems they were together. She was quite tall, slender, brown-haired, in her early thirties. She asked, together? Yes, they were without clothes in my bedroom when I came home this morning. This kind of intimacy. Ah, you're the guy who hit him? Yes, sorry. I'm not sorry, okay. Simon has been strange lately. This got me thinking. He didn't play children's sports like he used to. He claimed that he was busy at work. I think he was busy with your wife. I don't know that for sure except for today, but they, of course, quickly got down to business, like they had a routine. 
What did the doctors tell you about how he was doing? They said neither one nor the other, although he may have surgery soon. Well, good luck to you. Will you take your children? They are with my parents. They know he's in the hospital, nothing special anymore. I went outside to get some fresh air and maybe clear my head a little. I decided not to make any decisions until I heard from Alice. I stood there for an hour and went back inside. Alice was in the same room of the emergency room, behind a curtain. I walked in on her, and she stirred but was still sleeping. I sat down in a chair and dozed off. I woke up when she started make a sounds. Oh, um. Her eyes flew open. She looked at me and closed them again. She started make a sound. I went for help. Dr. Moore was at the nurse's station, and I waved to her. She quickly approached. She seems to be waking up, although I'm not sure if I should be there when she does. She saw me and just passed out again. Wait here. She entered. I could hear but not see. How are you, Alice? Can you tell me? Alice answered her in a weak voice. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Alice, we need you to be fully awake. You need to accept the situation, whatever it is, and move forward. Detachment simply cannot last long. I'm going to let you go this afternoon, maybe in two hours. Fine. Where's Tim? He was here when I first woke up. He thought you would have reacted better if he wasn't here, although he is somewhere nearby. H.M., I wonder how long this will last. I screwed up big time. What about Simon? Is he okay? Tim hit him. We don't know if he'll be okay or not. He'll probably have to have surgery. Damn. Well, I told him not to be so adventurous. It was a bad risk. He lost. I bet I do too. Maybe you should talk to Tim. I'm sure I can find him, or maybe I can wait until you get home. I opened the curtain and went inside. Alice, I'll take you home. I hope soon after that. Okay, thank you. I'm really sorry. We will talk. I turned to Dr. Moore. When can we leave now? I'll start filling out the paperwork. We'll give her some medical clothes. She left. Alice said, I want, I'm so sorry, Timmy. Sorry, Timmy, sorry. It's just not a big deal. You have to understand. When we get home, Dr. Moore brought her a medical form. I left the stall while she was changing. She seemed to take this as a refusal, and so it was. I had no desire to see her without clothes, maybe never again. They put her in a wheelchair. As I pulled the car to the exit, she got up and got into the car. We didn't speak for the ten-minute drive. Her tears flowed, but she did not cry. I opened the front door, and we walked into what was our happy home. There were no police there, there wasn't even much clutter downstairs. Alice sat down in the rocking chair in the living room. I'm going to check upstairs. I'll be right back. I ran up, it was a complete mess up there. In our bedroom, there was a piece of carpet cut out that green fell on. I guess I will do some research. The bed was stripped down to the mattress, the drawers were pulled out but not fully closed. I decided to tidy it up later. The other rooms were fine, except that there were traces of fingerprint powder in the bathroom. I wasn't really looking forward to talking to Alice. I called her parents and told them she was home. They breathed a sigh of relief but wanted to know if they should come. I didn't know what to say. I gritted my teeth and went downstairs. Do you want something? Coffee? Water? Alice looked at me when I asked. No, nothing. I sat down opposite her on the sofa. We sat facing each other about six feet apart. What happened, Alice? I thought we were fine. It's hard to explain, Timmy. I've worked for Simon all these years. I've always liked him. Not, you know, beautifully, but in the last month or so, he started flirting. He made little comments about how good I looked. Sometimes he touched me on my arm or shoulder. I was surprised. Then he invited me to lunch, just us, he said. But didn't you think about all this, this big change in attitude? And didn't you think it was strange? Maybe a little bit. 
she looked down. I was flattered, and he's quite attractive. I found myself interested. It took me a while to admit this. So, you knew that he was trying to seduce you, and you, what did you decide? See what happens. She put her head in her hands, but she raised her eyes again. And what, at this point, I was sure we were screwed. Because it wasn't a case of her being tricked or pilled, she wanted this. And we went to dinner. I asked him why he was doing this now, after all this time. He said that he always wanted me from the very beginning but suppressed this desire. This was his phrase. Alice, why, what's wrong with me that you were open to him? You're okay, Timmy. He said he wanted me so much. He said he wants me much more than you. I was old hat to you, new for him, exciting. Just the thought made me horny. Why didn't you talk to me about this? What would I say, that I'm thinking about cheating for more excitement? I never thought about it. How many times have you had intim, Alice? Not once. Today was supposed to be the one and only day, but you showed up. I was scared when I saw you. You just looked at me with such contempt. Not even hatred or anger, exactly the same as at first, a quick glance, and then you hit him with the baton. I thought when she said that the cops should have talked to her first them, I had to do it. He rushed at me, I saw, but it was so quick and final. Alice, I don't believe you about this being the first time. I saw him coming through the back door, the door was not locked, and it didn't take me long to get inside and upstairs. But you were both without clothes, and he was about two and away from you. You wanted this too, so I think you've done this before. No, Tim. Simon and I kissed in his car two days ago. We felt each other out, but I didn't let him go further. I told him that he can come to our house after you leave for work. All this seems so unlikely. Think if you saw what I saw, what would you believe? Oh, I, you have to believe me. Or maybe not, I just don't know how to get you to accept what I'm saying. And now I will never be able to accept what you say. What should I do, Tim? I love you. I don't like Simon. I just, he made me want him. How he is so strong, he says what he wants. He wanted me, and you obviously wanted him. Alice, I want to really think about this. Right now, if I decided to do anything now, we would be heading towards divorce. I can never forget what I saw. Fine. But please remember, I love you. I'm so sorry you're hurting. She blurted it out while sobbing. I turned and left. I went upstairs to our home office. I started looking through materials from Green's phone. Alice's phone had been receiving quite a few calls since about two months ago. The calls always came in the evening. He wouldn't have to call at work. There were also texts there. They always talked about lunch. They seemed to go to lunch together about twice a week for five weeks. Since Alice worked from home three days a week, this meant that every day she went to work, she had lunch with Green. I decided to watch his video. It all started when he followed Alice up the stairs. She was wearing a short robe, she entered the bedroom and immediately threw him onto the floor. The video wavered for a second as he placed the phone on the dresser and pointed towards the bed. You are beautiful, Alice exactly as I always imagined. He jumped on the bed, and then I opened the door and hit him. The sound on the video was great, you could hear a loud slap and his scream. I watched it all the way until I picked up the phone to call 911. Based on the video, I wasn't sure if Alice was telling the truth about it being the first time. Maybe, but of course, she was looking forward to her intimacy with Green. Maybe it would only be one time, like she said, but I doubted it. He was her boss. I went into the living room and told Alice that I needed to go back to work to close the office. By that time, it was already past 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I jogged back. Now I really didn't care how Alice felt. I felt less overwhelmed and more angry than before. I shut down what I was doing when I went for a run. I looked up the divorce laws in our state. Adultery was a ground for divorce, although it was not often used. There was no fault in this. This could be done after six months of separation if a separation and property agreement were signed. But if one party didn't sign the contract, it would take much longer, maybe 18 months. Tim wasn't sure if he wanted to divorce Alice, 
but he was sure he wanted separation. He drew up an agreement. It basically said that they would separate, live in different places, and split their finances. She will provide for herself, and he will be responsible for himself. There will be no intimate contact between them. In addition, what is most interesting, each promised not to have a night with other people. If one did this, it would free the other, and the divorce would take place as quickly as possible. I printed three copies. I walked home. Alice was preparing dinner. There wasn't much, spaghetti with meat sauce, salad. She was wearing a tracksuit and no makeup. Barefoot, she looked at me timidly. I said, it smells good. Thank you. Can I help? I can handle it, but if you want carrots for your salad, they're in the refrigerator. I chopped up some carrots and threw them into a bowl. We ate in relative silence. There was red wine, and they both had a glass. We washed the dishes together. Let's go to the living room and talk. I saw that Alice was scared. I followed her inside. Alice spoke in a quiet voice. Tim, I want to say again how sorry I am. I want to try to understand how I could have been so wrong. I decided that I needed to see someone. Everything is fine, but now I think we need to break up. I'll find an apartment nearby. You can stay here. I don't feel comfortable staying here now. Are you sure? I feel so guilty. Do you want to get a divorce? So, shall we part? This is a step towards this, but I haven't decided yet. I just decided I needed some space to think. I wrote a separation agreement. I handed it to Alice. She read it to the end with tears in her eyes, silent tears. I've already signed it. She looked up at me. Can we wait a few days to do this so I can arrange for my mom to come here? Well, I can wait a little. Agree on it. Why don't you do it and tell me? Tim, I meant what I said. I'm going to counseling. Maybe you can come if the consultant asks. Maybe. I really love you, Alice, but I'm confused and very, very angry. It feels like I'll never be the same as I was. Me too, but you did it, who I thought you were. You are not. The point is that you got caught. But you are the same person. You're just not who I thought you were, not the woman I loved. Then she burst into tears. I didn't make the slightest move to console her. The woman I loved would never do this. You are not her. Maybe you're basically her, maybe not. I feel like our whole life together has been a sham. The only question is how much of a sham is this? I went upstairs. I grabbed my belongings from the master bedroom, enough to get me through the next day, and moved into the guest room. The next day was a working day. I hardly slept. I got up early, got dressed, and went to work. I went out around 9 a.m. and bought a McMuffin. I was surprised that I was able to work. I sent several emails, copied notes in the judge's office. Then I began to take apart what I had. When I got into it, I forgot about Alice for a while. Maybe this is how I will have to behave during separation. Over lunch, I looked up apartment rental information. I called one just two blocks from work and made an appointment to look at it the next morning, Friday. The day seemed to fly by. When I thought about it, I decided it was an escape mechanism. I started walking home at about 5.30. We rented a three-bedroom house. The lease expired in two months. We lived there for four years and this place began to feel like home to us. But now it's no longer for me. I walked along the treadmill and entered the sliding back door. Just like the day before, Alice was cooking. She had fish stew on the stove, it smelled great. She was a very good cook. I was fine. I greeted her as I walked inside. She looked at me. I cooked fish stew. Yes, I felt it. I smiled at her. Thank you. I'll change now. As we ate the stew, Alice said, my mother will be here on Saturday. Have you found a place for yourself? Maybe I'll look at the apartment tomorrow. We can sign the papers tomorrow evening. I won't be there on Saturday anyway. It doesn't have to be this way, Tim. I promise you that this will never happen again. I promise. 
No, obviously promises can be easily broken, I replied. She looked at me intently, there were no tears. You know, you let your hurt feelings get in the way of common sense. What would be wise for me to do? Ignore your violent fidelity? If it will not happen, you could try. Don't ignore it, forgive. I apologize. I really have no idea if I can forgive. I know for sure that I will never be able to forget this. What happened? What I saw? Video. I can email you a copy. God, Tim, she began to sob. I didn't mean for it to be cruel, just so you know what I saw. Maybe someday you'll forgive me for being in the way. She ran away. She ran up the stairs. I cleaned everything up. I rented an apartment. It was a studio apartment with a beautiful view of the running track and a small park. It was halfway between work and my former home, but there was no furniture in it. I arranged for a double bed to be delivered, as well as sofas and armchairs. The expenses were painful but necessary. I wondered if Alice would have a job in the future or the same one. If not, I'd probably have to increase funding. I sat after lunch thinking about all sorts of things. I decided that it was very unlikely that I would ever return to Alice. I had a friend who worked at the same company as Alice, Michelle Davis. She and I went to college together and were together before I met Alice. I kind of left her for Alice, and she kind of left me for a frat guy. We remained communicating with friends. One of the reasons I chose Alice was that I thought she was a bit flighty. Her quick hookup with a frat boy seemed to confirm this. She left him as quickly as she started. She went to law school with me and married a fellow student. She had a young son and what seemed like a stable marriage. This shows how good I was at reading people. I called her. Shelly, this is Tim. Damn, Tim. What are you doing? I heard that you froze green. Not my fault, self-defense, Tim. I'm free for lunch. Agreed. It was only two hours away from here. I met Shelly at a restaurant. We hugged, sat down, and ordered. While we were waiting for lunch, she said, Well, tell me. I told her, she was a person I trusted. I found that I still trusted her. When I finished my story, she said, I've heard rumors about Simon Green, that he's gone off the rails and might be getting a divorce. I also heard that Alice was dating him. I didn't believe it. Well, what did you hear? What did you see, for example, lunch meetings in the office? Everything else was speculation, but Green, I've never seen him so often. Green had to change. It was like he was always looking for someone to sleep with. The girls from the office were beside themselves. Hmm, so Alice wasn't the only one? Maybe not but it seemed she was a prime target. They saw each other every day. No offense, but why didn't you call me? I thought about that, but I thought that she wouldn't do anything, and calling you can cause a lot of trouble. What are you going to do? I rented an apartment and wrote a separation agreement. Six months, you know. But I'm not sure. I hope you at least listen to her. What could she say? She has already apologized and said she will never do that again. So what? I think this is a difficult question. Yes. How are you and Big Bill and Little Will doing? Little Will is great. He is three years old. Dynamo machine. He starts going to preschool, okay. And oh, Tim, you don't need to listen to my problems. Yours are much more serious. I could use a break from them. I will help if I can if something is wrong. Nothing special. He has to travel a lot. Sometimes when he returns home, he is distant, not like before. Now hearing about Alice, it makes me think, but I just now decided to be proactive. Shelly, what does this mean? Maybe check it out a little. He is a good guy. We are family, but I need a little confidence. Just ask him. Talk. You both know how to talk. Figure it out. Tell him how you feel. I'm worried about this. He may take this to mean that I don't trust him. And you just be gently diplomatic. Maybe. Thank you. I hope you and Alice get through this. I was never a friend at school, you know why, 
but I thought she was good for you, after all. We finished lunch, hugged, and left. Shelly was a good woman, and I hoped no harm would come to her. I was told that Alice had returned to work. I was relieved that she wasn't fired. More and more, I came to the conclusion that it was all over between me and Alice. We were devoted only to each other, we had no children. She broke her part of the obligations, so it was all over. And I didn't believe that I wanted to start all over again with new responsibilities. It was a depressing conclusion, but I felt it was right. I haven't had any contact with Alice since I moved in that Saturday. A week has already passed. She left three messages on my phone asking me to come over and talk. I never answered. She texted me that she was on probation at her job but was still working. I walked past the house the following Saturday afternoon. I just got off the treadmill and knocked on the patio door. Alice's mother, Tess, was in the kitchen and opened the door when she saw me. Hello, Tess. Is Alice around here? She went out. She should be back soon, Tim. I mean, she's so confused about this. Maybe, have you already decided something? I just wanted to talk to Alice. Tess, where did she go? Tess looked a little embarrassed. She went to her friend. Tess, you're hiding something. You're bad at it. Which friend did she spend the night here or somewhere else? Tim, she was in bad condition. A partner came in, and they went to have something to eat. Tess, was this dinner yesterday? You can't hide it from me. I noticed that she was positioned to block the door from the kitchen. I walked past her to the front door. A car pulled up, a brand new Mustang. A blonde man was driving. He walked out of his door and walked around the car to open the passenger door. Alice left. She was dressed for a date. For yesterday's date. I ran up to them. Hello, Alice, I came to see you. She turned around in shock. The guy looked scared and worried. Timmy, this is James from work. He, he had you at night. I was calm, but something in my voice must have scared them both. James from work began to back away. Dude, I don't want any trouble here. I was only trying to help. Expletive, you got what you wanted. If you stay here a little longer, you will get much more than you bargained for. He was my height and younger. I saw him straighten up, offended. Alice screamed, No, no, just stop, James, please leave now. James said, Whatever you say, Alice, emphasis on your dot. He chuckled, quickly walked around his car, and drove away. I looked at Alice. That's all, you know. You didn't last even a week. The agreement said no intim. I'm going to refer to this point. I will arrange for you to be served as soon as the papers are ready. Sorry, Tim, I'm weak and I needed support and I knew that you and I broke up. But I love you, even if it doesn't seem like it. I think you just needed some new intimate to get the thrill you missed last week. What a lot you've become. We no longer need to maintain any communication. Hire a lawyer. I walked away, walked around the back of the path, and went home. She made this very simple decision, although I was very surprised. I've been with her for a long time, and none of this crap happened. She was attractive, and men were probably attracted to her often. I wondered why she suddenly started giving in to them. Before returning to my room, I decided that this would forever remain a mystery to me, or maybe I would ask her mom. I actually had a moment alone with Tess about a week after the last visit. I slipped into the house when Alice was most likely at work. I knocked on the patio door and Tess let me in. Why are you here, Tim? I wanted to understand what happened if possible and I thought you might have some ideas. I mean, we were doing great and then she just went, do you have any idea why? Maybe she had. I think problems with self-esteem. She wasn't very attractive to men boys throughout most of high school. She had no chest and was skinny. Her two friends filled her bra much faster, they were popular and became cheerleaders. Alice was far behind them when it came to popularity. Gradually, they moved away from her, but when she turned 17, she changed. She gained some weight in all the right places, there was no more acne on her face. The boys began to pay attention to this. 
she was 18. And then that summer, she went crazy. She worked, but every evening she went out with her friends and boyfriends. I was afraid that she would get pregnant, but she took the pills. I was worried about illness, but as far as I know, this did not happen. I see. But when I met her in college my freshman year, she didn't seem intimate needy. She always seemed normal to me. However, she was experienced more than me. She told me what she likes and what she wants. I liked it. But she has never strayed since we started dating. Still, Tess paused and asked, Are you guys were talking about children? Yes, we plan to start soon. Now it's all gone. Well, maybe she was worried that if she got pregnant, men wouldn't like her anymore. I think she contacted her boss because he was stalking her and she needed some reassurance. This is the best I can guess. But what about the boy with the Mustang? Same reason, a young guy with a luxury car. Pro that she is still attractive before she, but she already knew. She knew well that she was unlikely to remain married or give birth to children. For me, yes. I don't know, maybe she was just horny. How long will you stay here? Not too long. I wish you a good life, Tess. I left. The divorce went through without any problems. Alice moved out of our rented apartment and rented an apartment on the other side of town, closer to her work. I had no contact with her after the trial. When we went to file our divorce, Alice came up in the hall. Take me to lunch, Tim. Actually, I'll pay. I need to say something. Fine. We went to Red Lobster. I ate the appetizer, and she ate the soup. She looked at me after we ordered. Tim, I really screwed you up. I went to a psychologist. She says I was afraid of children, but I do not know. I think maybe I'm just a born fallen woman. I really wanted Simon to me. Sorry, I may never understand, Alice. He's not that big of a catch. What happened to him? He didn't die, and I never heard anything more. He returned to work part-time. He has a cane and uses his right hand very little, and his wife divorced him. Good for her. I think it was cruel. You really ruined his life, Tim. Well, you two really ruined my life. But I think not as much as you ruined your own life. By the way, how are you doing? I miss you in our life. Now I can have as much intim as I want with most men I meet and I really like it. I get really hot and horny when this happens. I have to do something about it. I don't know why this started happening to me again. Simon reminded me of the guy who took me to prom and then took my untouchable. Maybe I wanted to go back to those glory days. And now you have them. You can have intimate for your pleasure. Don't be cruel, but she laughed. I really didn't mean for it to be funny, but I understood the humor and laughed with her. She said, a new man always turns me on. She paused. Anyway, I really miss you in family life. I haven't found a single guy who is better at intim than you. Maybe one was just as good, he's bigger. But you and I got to know each other so well, you could always satisfy me very much. I was a fool, I'll admit. I didn't really try to hide it from her, and she noticed. I see you still find me attractive, Tim. I am available to you at any time, she started singing this song. Just say my name, and you know wherever I am I will come running to see you again, she smiled at me. Oh, Alice, God, I was in a quandary right then and there. Alice was the hottest woman alive, at least to me. I wanted her more than any other woman I had ever met. Our waitress came over with our food. Alice stood up and threw thirty dollars on the table. She turned to the waitress. Something has changed. We have to leave right now. I woke up, Alice and the waitress looked at my crotch at the same time. Alice blushed, and the waitress, whose name tag said Gwen, blushed and looked confused for a moment. Then she broke out into a wide smile. I see that you two need to go out now. She looked straight at me. Come back later, big boy. I finish at six. She was nice. Alice grabbed my hand and gave her an angry look. She dragged me outside, her apartment was two and a half blocks away. We walked through the main door and took the elevator up. As soon as the elevator door closed, Alice pounced on me. 
she pressed me against the wall and rubbed my whole body. This will be so great, Tim. I'll pin you to the bed. Fine, I was breathing heavily. The elevator door opened, two women stood behind the door. Alice and I exited the elevator, the women were stunned. We rushed past them. One said, Hi, Alice. Alice didn't answer, the door to her apartment opened. She pulled me inside, I almost fell over the end table. Arrington was quick but intense, I figured if I stayed with her, we'd be at it again soon, and it could have serious health consequences, at least for me. The divorce took place in the morning. Alice and I did this all day until late at night. We ate a light meal. I suggested that we could go back to Red Lobster, but she firmly refused. She said we had a soup from the refrigerator, we didn't even get dressed to eat. She looked at me after we finished the cake. She had with her, should we talk now or have intim? I never hesitated. I stood up, took her hand, and said, damn. That's what we did several more times that night, they were all fantastic, some were slow, some were hard. She was right that I knew all her buttons, and she knew mine. At times, Intim felt like an all-out war to see who could make the other swoon. Nobody won this game, but it was a lot of fun to play. In the morning, we had a night again, and she made breakfast. While we were eating, I decided that we needed to discuss what had happened. Alice, I hope we can continue like this. Divorce intimate was much better than honeymoon night. Timmy, now I know that it was a mistake for me to get married. I thought that I could keep my promise to be only yours. I tried to, but now I know that I can't do this. This obviously doesn't mean I want you out of my life. I wasn't kidding when I sang the James Taylor song. But the time will come, Alice. I'll want to settle down and have children. Maybe that's part of what brought you to other guys. So, I like intim with you. You are the best, you'll probably always be the best I've ever had. I just think we could keep this up until one of us has some reason to stop. Fine, let's get on with it now. We spent the entire weekend in bed, except for short breaks to eat, shower, and use the toilet. On Saturday afternoon, there was a knock on the door. Alice put on her robe and opened it. It was the woman who spoke to her as we were exiting the elevator. She was older, but she looked good. Alice said, Hi, Maisie. Maisie looked into the apartment. I was wearing gym shorts and not hiding. Alice and I were kissing, and I was horny, even though I was covered up well. Alice, I haven't seen you for a while, and I just wanted to check if you were okay. Moreover, I'm doing well, Maisie. Very good, Alice smiled back at me. Maisie looked too. Maisie said, I understand, you just keep having a good time. You're a lucky girl, Alice. I won't worry anymore. Thank you. I'm sure we will. Alice quietly closed the door and giggled. You gave her a good look at the product. Maybe you should have invited her for coffee, she would like it with cream. I can't let this happen. Too much cholesterol, she pulled my shorts off. On Monday, we both went to work. We haven't settled anything completely. All day, I thought about what happened. I would never ever consider any permanent relationship with Alice. This cannot be a partnership. But as long as we had supercharged night, I was ready for it until I met someone I wanted to marry and have children with. Of course, you need to be very careful in this matter. Alice taught me a hard lesson. But despite this, I wanted a family and children. I was on guard. Alice wasn't like that. She had me and three other guys she slept with. We weren't married, and I didn't mind. In fact, the thought of her being such a expletive even turned me on. I just got tested regularly for STDs. None of them were ever positive. Oh, and I met Maisie one day while leaving Alice's. We had quick intim, that is, me and Alice. Maisie looked me up and down with a very significant look. She said, hello. Maybe you remember me? I definitely remember you. You make a good tent. I really remember you, Maisie. Alice says you're divorced? Yes, for a year and a half already. It's no fun being a single woman my age. Maisie, you look great for any age, and you know it. Are you going to invite me in? 
I'm sure about it. You're Tim, right? Yes. We went up to the fourth floor where Maisie's apartment was across the hall from Alice's apartment. When we were at Maisie's door, Alice came out of hers. She looked at me and Maisie and started laughing. You're a real stud, Tim. I would never have thought this about you when we were married. She looked at Maisie. Have a wonderful time, Maisie. Tim is a top-notch stallion. She walked away with a smooth gait. Maisie was interested in Alice and me, but first, she showed me the bedroom, which was tastefully furnished. At least when we walked in. Maisie was 40, she had a son in college and a daughter who worked downtown. She was good in bed, and I really enjoyed being with her. I left the next morning, promising to keep in touch. I kept that promise, it was a pleasure for me. I began to wonder what other women lived on the fourth floor, but I never found out. One day, I was walking past the courthouse when a woman walking towards me stopped and asked, We don't know each other. She looked puzzled. I remembered her. Gwen, the waitress. You're Gwen, you were our waitress when we left our food at Red Lobster. Oh, she blushed, now I remember. It's strange that I forgot, but I didn't really look at your face. You'll have to excuse me. I'm Tim. Are you still working there part-time? Work? I also do modeling. She was a pretty blonde, slim with good hips, blue eyes. I remember that you invited me to meet you at six, but alas, Alice and I were together all weekend. H.M. Are you guys consistent? No, we, well, on the day that we met you, we had just returned from court where our divorce was finalized. Somehow this seemed to energize us, as you saw. Okay, this is strange. Does this still work? We are dating. There is no doubt that we are compatible in some ways, not in others. She smiled at me. Maybe you should ask me out on a date. I'm not working today. I like your words. Can we have dinner tonight in my house? I will cook. I look forward to it with pleasure, Tim. That evening, she arrived around 6.30. She looked stunning in a short evening dress and sandals. I made us fried chicken and fried rice. We talked, she was 25 and made ends meet by working as both a model for several clothing magazines and as a waitress. She was not married but had broken up with her long-term boyfriend about 10 months ago. At the time, I was 34 and making good money at a law firm. I had my own apartment and a good car. Alice, Maisie, and I had our own sessions. I also had a friendly relationship with a woman who worked at the courthouse. Maybe twice a month, but I was willing to commit and Gwen seemed nice. I decided to have an affair with her and see where it leads. That first night, we agreed that I would take her home. She kissed me at her door. I was excited about this, but she didn't jump straight into bed. As we moved forward, I began to fall in love with her. She was pretty and smart, and I believed that she fell in love with me. On our third date, we made it to bed. It was nice. I made love to her, and she seemed to appreciate it. I decided to break up with other women. One night, a few weeks later, Gwen and I had just finished a rough intimate session. We didn't always have loving intim, she likes it rough sometimes, like me, like many people, I think. Gwen, I told you about my marriage and its problems, and now I think I'm in love with you. I stopped having intimate with other women. Glad to hear that. Since I met you, you are the only boyfriend I've had. I didn't even kiss anyone. I really love you, Tim, but I worry about your insecurities about fidelity. Will you always distrust me because if I say that I will only be with you, I will do so? I'd be lying if I said I wasn't worried, but if you promise me, I, for my part, will do everything possible to solve the problem of fidelity. Fine, deal. I will be faithful, and you will be faithful too. It is suitable. Two weeks later, I proposed. We got married three months later. Her parents lived in Chicago, but we held our ceremony here. It wasn't luxurious. I invited Alice and Maisie. I introduced Gwen to Alice right after I proposed. Alice was kind to her, but I could see that she was a little depressed. We weren't in love, but I knew she would miss the intim. I would feel that way too. Gwen and I went to the Bahamas for our honeymoon, that was great. Then we moved into my apartment, 
and everything went very well. We immediately decided to have children, and we succeeded twice in three years, Thomas and Eileen. I became a partner in a firm and bought a house in a nearby suburb. I kept in touch with Alice. No, not the hot one. She married the guy from her job a year after Gwen and I. His name was Larry Gibson. He was successful, and she had a son, Lawrence, and another, Raymond. They moved to a place not far from Gwen and me. The four of us would meet each other in the area. Then the children went to the same play school. Gwen and Alice became friends, but Larry was very wary of me. I think he didn't trust me around Alice, and he was right. The attraction between Alice and me still existed. Gwen knew it, but she trusted me. After a while, she even trusted Alice that she would not try to get closer to me. But Larry, who could sometimes see sparks flying, never calmed down. Nevertheless, he and I had common interests, mainly baseball. We were on the same men's team in the old-timers league, and we were both good at it. We also received season tickets to Jem's MLB games. We were both fans. Sometimes he and I went together. One day, I decided to talk openly with him about my relationship with Alice, before and now. We were waiting to leave the garage at Jem's Park after the game. I turned to him, Larry, I want to make it very clear to you that I will never have intimate with Alice, never again. She is married, I'm married, this won't happen. I can see that this is bothering you, God, Tim, this is a direct way to approach it. You and I could be good friends if you trusted me and Alice, but Tim, it's obvious that you too, with your history, still have lust, to put it bluntly. I can't deny it, there's a story there. We were compatible, but I give you my word. I'm sure she told you the same thing. We need to end this if we can, Tim. I get the impression that I just see you two occasionally, like at the club dance last month. If anything, it seems like you had some amazing intimate experiences together, and you know it's annoying sometimes. I wonder who she thinks about when we have intimate, about me or about you, or about some movie star. Do you think about her when you're with Gwen? No, but that doesn't mean I don't think about her at all. We had some good times too, maybe better times, maybe better than ever with me. That's what really worries me, Larry. I had good intim with Alice when we were married and after, but after the divorce, it was just intim, love is gone. She was always good at intim, as did several others I've been with. I have good intimate with Gwen, sometimes it's great. Alice was no better than Gwen or others might be just as good, it is love that makes our night special. You have it with Alice, and I have it with Gwen. Okay, I understand what you're saying, I didn't think of it that way. Thank you. And that made it easier for all four of us to have this conversation. Of course, I lied to him, no intimate I've ever had with any woman has been as good as I had with Alice after the divorce. I'm still thinking about it, not exactly every day, and I see her, and I know that she thinks about it too. Maybe if Alice and I are both in our 80s, and our spouses leave, and we're in some nursing home, maybe we'll see if we can each other to death. How much did you like or dislike what your wife did? Write your opinion in the comments. See you in the next video.